Hey everybody, Dream Room 64 here, and today's video is about different screens that I picked up recently. These are all old screens, old TVs, old monitors that are um, kind of fun to play around with. I like old tech. I like uh, grabbing this stuff for cheap and giving it a try and seeing what I can do with it and maybe trying to find a fun use case. So over here, you're looking at two 2013 Panasonic Plasma TVs. What you're gonna see on screen isn't nearly reflective of how good they look in real life. I have bright lights on, the camera's not, dialed in perfectly, um, but these things are, are beautiful. So although they look very similar, they're both 2013 Panasonic Plasmas, um, the one on the left is a lower end model, the one on the right is a higher end model, but both models have their, their different strengths. So I'll talk about that later in the video. Over here, we have two IPS LCD monitors. They are um, pretty similar. And uh, one's a Dell, one is an HP. Now paid $10 each for those. And uh, you see what I'm doing here is I'm running a Nintendo DS emulator. Uh, I have a, a Raspberry Pi 5 running an operating system called Replay OS. I talked all about that in my previous video. And one of the perks of that operating system is that it lets you output to two screens at once with different video on each. So I'm, I'm using that to test out Nintendo DS emulation on dual screens. It's kind of fun. Not the most practical to set up for everyday use, but having fun with it. And by the way, this is just a real temporary setup out here in my garage. And just, I just set this stuff up to demo. Not gonna really actually play out here too often, but it was fun nonetheless. Now over here is a 480p LCD TV, which I'm not really a big fan of LCDs. They don't have good, uh, they don't have the best colors. They don't have the best contrast. They don't have the best black levels. They don't have the best motion clarity. But uh, especially when they're old like this, this is from the year 2004, it's over 20 years old. Uh, and I paid $20 for it, by the way. Uh, they are, you know, they're interesting. I wanted to try it out. I had to hope, given that it has 640 by 480 resolution, that hey, maybe, uh, maybe I can get pixel perfect sixth gen gaming on it. Well, yeah, that didn't work out. I read through the instruction manual. I read through the service manual. I went through every single setting in the service menu and I could not find a way to get one-to-one -one pixel mapping. Now, a funny thing is there is one guy out there in the world, it seems, who actually really likes 480p LCD TVs and he has a blog post all about them. So I'll put a link to that. And uh, he has a list of good and bad monitor, good and bad TVs and monitors. This one would definitely be on the, the bad list since it doesn't have one-to-one -one pixel mapping, but it's nonetheless interesting. I'd say maybe the only use case for it would be to use as like a desktop, uh, a benchtop test screen, or maybe if you have a retro game store and you need a, a TV on the counter to test trade-ins or something, uh, because just the picture quality isn't really beautiful. Now you're, you're probably wondering what's the input lag like? That's certainly something I was thinking about. So first of all, I tried uh, Super Smash Brothers Melee on here and I noticed, hey, it actually feels good. It doesn't look great because it's an old LCD, but it felt pretty good to play. And then I tried F-Zero GX, F-Zero GX, surprisingly felt also really good. So I, I got my time sleuth out and no, there's no HDMI on here, but I have a way to test H, um, the lag without HDMI anyway, using the time sleuth. And this thing only has one frame of lag in, in, in the context of 60 Hertz. So that's actually pretty impressive. One frame of lag. So it kind of busts the myth that all old LCDs are laggy. This one certainly is not and really nobody should feel one frame of lag if they were to play on this, but yeah. Don't get too excited if you find one, but maybe do a little research and see if perhaps you found one of the ones that does allow for one-to-one -one pixel mapping. And then a couple more fun facts about it. The original retail price on this was $899. Now, if you adjust that for inflation, that's over $1,500 today. And while I was also researching this thing online, I did find some old web pages where you could buy it. And it was a little less than that $899 retail price, but it was still very expensive. And I love going down rabbit holes when I get old tech and I just do as much researching as I can, I, I go on the internet archive, I start digging up old forum posts and browsing old retailer sites. And it's, it's a lot of fun doing all that. Uh, and one more fun fact before we move on about this guy is that it has the original remote here and just dropped a battery on the floor. I wanted to talk about the fact that I have never seen, what that focus is, I have never seen one of these Panasonic batteries leak. Okay, I believe these are the original batteries in this remote here. And uh, yeah, they're still working. It's it's astounding. So let me know, I'm curious, have you ever seen a Panasonic AA battery leak? I have not. Those batteries are probably over 20 years old and they are still working and they are not leaking, which is just shocking. <laughs> okay, 
let's talk about these guys here. While we're on the subject of input lag, like I just said, one frame on that 16.66 milliseconds or so. Uh, these guys here are also very good on lag, despite being LCDs. This one measures six milliseconds. Um, but if I put it on a higher, or if I put, if I enable a, um, what do you call it, a uh, dynamic contrast mode, the lag explodes to over 100 milliseconds. So you actually have to watch out what settings you have on your TV or monitor. It could be a really nasty one that, that blows up the lag rating. So six milliseconds is less than half a frame. That is really good. This one is even better, the Dell here. This one measures in at three milliseconds. So that's uh, really quite impressive. And you're not gonna feel three milliseconds. So that's even though this thing is over, uh, it's about 11 years old, that's right up there with the almost the best screens you can get today for 60 Hertz gaming, three milliseconds. So, you know, they are LCDs, they're not amazing or anything, but that the lag is certainly impressive and that's not a reason to avoid these. <laughs> okay, now let's talk a little bit more about um, my impression of playing the Nintendo DS on Replay OS, because that's just kind of a an interesting use case here. Well, I do have a criticism, and that is that the it, it, while it has integer scaling and it looks nice and sharp and crisp, there's no blurriness, that's for sure. Uh, there, there's a scan line filter here, and that's the only filter option. So I could use I could do integer scaling with no scan lines, or I could do scan lines. And scan line does make it look better. But if you go to original hardware, you know there of course are no scan lines on the original real deal hardware. It's just a chunky LCD, low res LCD. So I'd really love to see a pixel grid filter option for Replay OS. And I think that would make these screens look even better, but um, there is an open GitHub request for that. I'll have to sign up for an account and give it a thumbs up. But uh, the developer of Replay OS is aware. So in terms of games worth playing on there, you know, anything you want to play like uh, that doesn't use the touchscreen much like Mario Kart DS, New Super Mario Bros, where you just have to use the touchscreen to activate a, um, a power up or something like that. Let me just show you how you use the touchscreen now. So you just use the right thumbstick and you move a cursor around. You can kind of see that on the screen there, an inverted color cursor. So it's not, you know, not the best for touchscreen games, that's for sure. But you can play stuff that doesn't really use the touchscreen much, like um, Pokemon, Phoenix Wright, those kind of games. Now, games like Trauma Center Under the Knife, you wouldn't want to play that, or Rhythm Heaven. Uh, one thing I did do some research on, though, is, is let's say Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. This is a game that's on my, my bucket list to play. There is a patch for the ROM for this game out there where it eliminates the touchscreen inclusion, which the touchscreen was just kind of a gimmick in this game. So I'll have to give that a try and then play it on Replay OS. And one more thing to say is that uh, although I had good luck using it, with dual screens like this that have the same aspect ratio and the same resolution. I didn't have luck if I tried to mix and match one of these with, say, a 16x9 TV. It didn't work. Maybe in the future, after some updates, um, that'll be an option. But right now, it is not. Okay, let's talk a little bit about what you're seeing over here, the 2013 Panasonic Plasmas. The one on the left is a Panasonic S64. The one on the right is a Panasonic ST60. And again, what you're seeing on screen isn't really reflective of how good these things look in person, especially with the lights off. Um, they have beautiful motion. This one here, when I say S64, I'm referring to the last three digits of the model code. Same thing for this one, except it's the last four digits of the model code. You can see ST60 up there. That's what plasma TV enthusiasts are, are talking about when we say the S64, the S60, the ST60, the VT60. We're talking about those last few digits of the characters of the model number. So the S64 is not a model you'll hear about often. And what's interesting about it is that it has a louver filter despite being a budget model. So the one on the right also has that filter on the screen and improves black levels in um, when there's ambient light. And this one is a little bit more of a mid-range model. So this one being a budget model has very limited picture control options in the menu, whereas this one has a better selection of picture control menus. Now the downside is that this one does a lot of video processing and it has very high lag. Uh, I measured it, came in a little over four frames and, and I did that in a previous video. I talk all about how I measure lag on plasmas and how I think it's proper to report it. This one on the other hand is, is very good. It's about frame and a half. So yeah, it doesn't beat the LCDs, even the 2004 four to three LCD, it can't beat that. Input lag is not the strength of plasmas, but when we're talking about only a frame and a half or two, even two frames of lag, even up to sometimes three, it's actually not so bad, especially depending on the games you're playing. You, you really won't feel it in many circumstances. So um, input lag is good on this one. 
bad on this one. I also took a look at how do these things compare in terms of motion clarity. So I pulled up a, a motion clarity test where I take the camera and I, I pan it, or you just do this with your own eyes you know, if you do it in person. And I compared the two. And the, uh, the, the lower end model here, the S64, didn't look so good. Uh, the ST60 looked a lot better. Now, when I actually play games on it, I don't notice that the motion clarity isn't perfectly optimal, but it's, and it certainly was way better than, than uh, OLEDs at 60 hertz or L LCD TVs without any trickery at 60 hertz. But um, yeah, it does not beat the ST60 in terms of motion handling, but it definitely does in terms of input lag. So these are pretty interesting models. And just one more thing, I guess I should say uh, a couple about, a couple about them. You can see here, this one's a little bit thicker. You know, like I said, it's a little bit lower end, more budget model. This one, more sleek and slim. A little bit warm right now, but they're not as hot. They're not all as hot as, as some people say, in my opinion. And then um, to get the video out onto both of these, I'm just using a little HDMI splitter. So I have a, some gameplay recording running on there right now. Yeah, oh, and uh, I for, oh yeah, you know what? I need to mention these things are at thirty over thirty one thousand hours. So the, the one on the left has uh, like thirty one thousand five hundred hours. The one on the right has about thirty one thousand eight hundred hours. If we take thirty one thousand five hundred hours divided by twenty four hours a day divided by three hundred sixty five days a year, we end up with three point five nine years of use. It's three point six really. So over three and a half years of, of power on time with thousands and thousands of power cycles are on both of these and they still look good. I have a um, OLED laptop here. So I turned the lights off one night. I held the laptop up with a classic OLED black level test running. And it was just astonishing how good these plasma TVs hold up after 31,000 hours. Modern TVs uh, based on ratings.com, durability testing, are not holding up. Uh, they they die way way sooner than any. They don't. They're not getting anywhere near thirty one thousand hours. Doesn't look like. So it's just aston astonishing how good these TVs have held up over the years. And um, you know, pay, I paid fifty bucks each for them. They do have a couple picture quality defects. This one has one dead pixel. Who knows when that dead pixel appeared? Maybe it could have been from the very factory on day one. This one I don't see any dead pixels. Um, on this one, I do see some sparkles on high contrast scenes. And on this one, I also see kind of like peppery sparkles in colorful areas, but not when I'm at a normal seating distance. So yeah, there are some aging issues, but they're pretty minor and way less minor than what you see on modern TVs. So it's a pretty remarkable TVs. This one's going to live out here in my garage because it's, you know, it is a little worn out. It has a deep scratch on the screen. It has that dead pixel. It's not the best one I have. So um, the one I'm the one I'm going to use for watching movies is the one that came in this box here, the VT60, and I'll, I'll talk more about that in a future video, and I'll talk more about um, updates to the office that I have that sitting in, and um, another topic for a future video is going to be the RGB Pi Two SCART adapter. Now that this that is not what I have in my hands here. This is just a random SCART cable that I'm uh, the end of a SCART cable. Um, but I'm going to talk about using Replay OS running on the Raspberry Pi 5 on a um, CRT TV with that adapter. So that's going to be a future topic. Uh, lots of good videos coming up. Let me know what you guys think about all these different screens or any, any particular models you have uh, an affection for that, that have been working well for you. I'm always curious. I love tracking this stuff down, playing around with it, and um, just having fun toying around in this hobby. All right. Well, everybody, thanks for watching. Hope to catch you in the next one. Feel free to leave a comment. All right. Bye.